Hello everyone and welcome to another Sonic Photo video game review. Today we'll be taking a look at the brand new Star Fox Guard, a spin-off Star Fox title that comes back with Star Fox Zero, which is actually a very special project Miyamoto has been working on for quite some time that uses very well the capabilities of the Wii U tablet. But is it any fun? Does it offer enough content to justify a full game? Let's find out. So the gameplay is actually very simple, you have 12 cameras and you have to protect your base from upcoming robots that could destroy your base of minerals. Because the story of the game is that Sleepy's uncle is taking care of a mineral facility but he needs security from people trying to steal away his mineral and destroy the machinery that's taking out all the minerals from that particular planet. So it's basically you're a security guard for this machine. The only difference is that these machines can actually shoot lasers thanks to Sleepy's technology. It sounds simple but each level brings in a lot of new robots of different types. There is the combat class robots, their main function is to destroy your base. Once you defeat all the combat robots, you will complete the stage. But there's the Chaos class robots that made the game more complex because they don't have the ability to destroy your base but they have the ability to distract your camera by putting a radar jammer, destroying totally your camera, grabbing your camera, making it spin and have no control, different types of things that make the game quite more challenging. Because even though you don't have to kill those robots in order to survive, you really do need to if you really want those cameras to function properly and be ready for the big important robots you have to take down. So how does this work in terms of controls? It's actually also pretty simple. With the gamepad, you touch which of the cameras you want to activate. The gamepad also works as a radar. The gamepad will tell you if there's enemies already inside your base. It will put the combat robots in blue and the chaos robots in yellow. This also helps in case you missed out on a robot on the cameras or you simply lost a ton of cameras and have no vision, at least the radar guides you with that. In short, this is a unique take on the tower defense type of game, but with security cameras, which is actually pretty cool. However, if you're expecting the game to evolve or change completely the way it's designed, it really doesn't. There's around four to five planets in total, and a total of 50 missions, but the concept of the gameplay is always the same in every single one of them. What actually changes is the type of enemies and the way the base is structured. Sometimes it will have close openings to the main core base that makes it a bit more difficult because that means you need to take out enemies from that entrance as quickly as possible. But aside from that, it doesn't really change. Thankfully there's definitely a lot of different type of enemies and there's definitely a lot of rhythms between them. You never know what's gonna pop out from the enemies. There's always a new type of enemy that will create all kinds of havoc. In terms of difficulty, the game is not actually that difficult. I did fail a couple of times. I think only at the very last levels the game really really got very challenging. But the game doesn't really feel too challenging because the game actually offers different upgrades for your cameras as well that you can do. One of them can make your camera become a freezing gun, so if you shoot down an enemy it's gonna freeze them. Which is actually very helpful if the enemy is right there at the center core of your base, you can quickly freeze them up. In order to unlock these abilities, however, you have to collect the medals. This little robot right here that you're seeing is in charge of grabbing all the medals throughout the stage. With all the medals he grabs, you're gonna get more experience and the more experience you grab from the levels, you will unlock new stuff. These stuff can be upgrades for your cameras or you can also unlock robots for the multiplayer mode. You earn medals by the amount of robots you destroy on a stage. Remember that you only have to destroy all the combat robots from that stage in order to complete it, but the more chaos ones you destroy, you will also get more medals of those robots. 
Now, like I mentioned, the game does actually feature a multiplayer online game. In this multiplayer online game, you can play against people's other robot armies. As you progress through the levels, you can unlock robots, so you can create your own squad of robots and then other players can play that squadron of robots. It actually offers a lot of customization as you can select from where is the robots gonna be starting off, where will they spawn, what will be their movement throughout each stage, the timing exactly in the timeline, how are they gonna spawn. You definitely have a lot of control in terms of that, which is actually pretty cool. You do have the ability to create your very own stuff. Will people really use it a lot? I don't know, but here's hoping. The game does really feature a pretty good amount of content considering that the game is actually free if you buy Star Fox Zero and even for the price admission of $15 in the eShop, it does actually offer quite enough content if you really really like tower defense games and this concept overall. I do have a few complaints about the game and is that the graphics presentation could have been better. While the robot designs and the actual base you're in don't look bad, the backgrounds of the planets do look pretty lacky, they look pretty much still frozen. And while maybe it's because they have so many cameras, at the same time they have to lower render that, or maybe it's just to make it simple so it doesn't distract you. But in the end, I did feel that it was kind of very blurry, especially if you already played Star Fox Zero and you can compare these planets to how they look in that game. And my other complaint is that the game is actually very creative. But I ultimately don't see people playing this one for quite a long time, at least after they finish it, because it can get pretty repetitive, and it's not a game that I'm just gonna jump out and say, let me replay it all over again. It doesn't really have that. And to me personally, even though I really do love Star Fox, I'm not entirely sure that this game concept should have been done to the Star Fox franchise because it really doesn't have too much similarity at all to the Star Fox games as there's no R-Wing control or anything aside from the fact that you're shooting with lasers. Still, it's nice at least to see more Star Fox content in the long run. If you definitely like a lot tower defense games, then I think you'll definitely have a lot of fun with this one and you should definitely give it a try, even if you have to get it on the eShop. Or you can even buy Star Fox Zero and if you don't like Star Fox Zero, you can sell Star Fox Zero and keep Star Fox Card. Because the good thing about this package is that they both come separately. They both have two separate Wii U boxes. So literally getting two physical copies differently. I give Star Fox Card a 7.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching this video game review and stay tuned for our Star Fox Zero video game review coming very soon. See you next time!